Hey, welcome back guys. So today we're just gonna talk a little bit about the components that I'm gonna be using on this Pilot RC 1.8 meter Bay Hawk. Uh, starting from my left, uh, what we got here is the Swinwin 80. I know originally during the unboxing, I mentioned that I was gonna be using the JetCat P100RX in the Bay Hawk. Um, unfortunately, due to the size and weight of that turbine, um, I opted out of using my Jet Cat and I'm now going to be using the Swinwin 80 which fits a lot better and uh, weighs, you know, the weight is going to be a lot more manageable uh, with, with the build. So I think it's going to be a lot better. We'll get better performance out of this, this, this turbine and saves us a lot of weight uh, as far as the overall weight for the, the jet when I'm done building it. So we've got the Swinwin 80 all set up on the uh, the bench stand. I've already uh, tested the turbine this morning at the field. Um, I'll add, I'll include the clip of that um, that that turbine um, test that I did this morning. And then a little to your right, we got the Pilot RC retract control board. I will be using <clears throat> dual receiver batteries for this setup. Uh, these are Air Powers lithium ion receiver packs. Uh, I've used these receiver packs on all of my turbine jets, and what I really like about these batteries is that not only they're compact uh, batteries, they also are a lot lighter than the light, uh, lithium polymer batteries. Um, I'm also uh, in using the uh, the balance board that is included, and what it's going to do is uh, it's going to help me pretty much with charging the batteries. Um, while it's still in the jet, I don't have to keep pulling the batteries out. I can just plug in the, the battery leads and charge my, my receiver packs and not have to worry about um, making sure that they're balanced because this little nifty little uh, PCB board here or balance board is going to balance both cells for me. So two receiver packs is going to go in the jet. We're going to use the Powerbox Pioneer also to manage all of our servos along with that running dual P, uh, PBR 26D um, receivers for redundancy and then DI gyro sat for the uh, gyro for this jet that we're going to be using. Um, off to further to the right this is the included UAT from the factory um, if you notice that this is a 250 milliliter UAT which I personally think that it's a bit overkill for this jet. So I'm actually going to be upgrading uh, and using one of these Inarco I-40 UATs. So if you look at the size comparison, looks a lot smaller and it'll save me a lot of space on the, uh, the control board or the deck. So what I ended up doing was taking the, the factory original uh, deck, which has all these cutouts um, and it just kind of makes it a little difficult to position where I want all the components. So what I did was I just replicated that deck and now I've got a clean slate and put everything you know, back together how it was on this board. But basically I've got a clean slate here that I'm going to be using to you know, position all of my components. And then once all of this is uh, installed into the jet, we're going to be using the power box core to control Control the jet and fly with it uh, and get it all programmed on this thing. Uh, I personally love this transmitter. Uh, I've, I've, I've had it for a little bit now and have been exploring more of the features and functions in it and I'm actually liking it more and more that I go out to the field and fly my turbine jets with it. So that's where I'm going to be using to fly this uh, Bayhawk with. So I'll see you guys in a little bit and I'll give you guys a quick tour of the internals of the BAE Hawk. All right guys, so wanted to give you guys a closer look at the uh, 1.8 meter Bayhawk. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the hatches and then show you guys the internals. I know I didn't have a lot of photos of the internals and stuff like that, but I, what I wanted to do was give you guys an actual uh, video of how it looks like inside the jet. So <clears throat> when it came from the factory, all the wires were pre-done, but they weren't sleeved. So, and they, they weren't really, you know, heat, heat insulated in the back either. So what I did was I actually made this four to one um, connector out of an MPX connector here, eight pins with a PCB board soldered into it. 
And then all of my control surfaces to all the servos are soldered to that PCB board. So now you got one lead or you know one plug to plug in when you get to the field to make it a lot easier um, for setup. I'm just gonna set this aside real quick. Uh, inside the jet, you got that Kevlar tank or uh, actually a fiberglass tank. Um, I may have to do some modifications to this tank uh, just so that I can service it a little bit better because right now it is just velcroed on the bottom to the fuselage and then you've got this uh, wood little brace that's going across and it's glued onto the side of the fuselage. So what I'm thinking I might have to do is kind of modify this setup a little bit so that I can still service the, uh, the tank without having to rip apart this jet just trying to get to it. So stick around, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that modification to be able to remove this tank or make it removable for servicing. And uh, I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, if you can see down the tube, right in here, in the exhaust, there you go. All right, so inside uh, the, the back end of the turbine, um, I actually had insulated back here also with some of the BVM heat shield and then some of the uh, aluminum um, heat shield tape that uh, I could put in to where uh, the servos are to the elevator and the rudder. So your rudder servo is located on the right side of the jet right here. So this is where your uh, servo is located for the rudder and then the elevator is on the left side of the jet. I've already taken the screw out so you guys can see. So you've got a single elevator servo back here. So this servo is actually rated for 359 ounces of torque at 7 volts. And it's a little higher on 8.4 volts, closer to 400 ounces of torque. So that is the setup right now with the elevator. So it is a full flying stab. You get um, four of these. M4 machine screws that hold the elevator on, on, on each side. So you got two on this side and then two on the other side for uh, the other elevator stab. So that's pretty much it for the tour of the uh, 1.8 meter Bayhawk. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the build and I'll take you guys along with me to show you guys what I'm gonna be installing in this jet. Um, and that way you guys can actually see what you guys are getting. All right guys, so we're out here at the field today. Um, it's the weekend, so I pretty much just brought out my planes to go fly uh, and then brought the uh, turbine to be tested out here at the field at the same time. So I've got the Swinwind 80 set up on this, uh, on this startup table. Got it all screwed down, ready to go, everything's fueled up. So let's fire up this turbine for the first time and see how it does. All right, so it turns all the way up. Fuel valve is on. Let's start the turbine. Guys, so we had a successful uh, bench test on the Swinwin 80. Um, right now, from idle to uh, full thrust, it's reading at about three seconds uh, from 
from minimum to max thrust so I might have to dial it down a little bit to get it to about a four seconds of uh, thrust um, output time uh, just so that I don't put too much stress on this turbine so everything checked out great we're gonna go home and uh, install this turbine on the uh, Bayhawk and I'll see you guys at the workbench alright guys so here's the wing of the uh, Bayhawk so the uh, right wing I've already had uh, gotten started with the connections that I made so here's that single MPX connector eight pins that I made so it looks a lot cleaner having just the uh, flush mounted MPX eight pin connector there and when you set up at the field just one single connection so here is the left wing that I haven't uh, gotten started yet so Right now, I still got the four servo leads and it kind of looks like a mess right there with the wire. So I'm gonna neatly organize this a little bit and uh, make it look a lot more presentable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and uh, see you guys in a little bit. All right guys, so here's the uh, left wing right now. Um, I've gone ahead and installed the four to one connector and cleaned up the wirings and zip tied them so they're out of the way and not gonna get caught when the gears are uh, retracted or extended. Um, the brake wire I routed um, pretty, basically pretty much behind the straw in between the gear door cover and I tucked it in in between the, the retract. Uh, what I also did with that wire is that I shoved it in behind there so that when the gears are retracted <laughs> They basically hide and tuck in behind there and they're not dangling out of the way or anything like that. Um, I did take my Dremel tool and sand it down here uh, where the uh, wood former is to the retract plate so that I have enough room for the wire to tuck itself back into the wing when the gears are uh, extended. Let's focus there. Uh, so show you guys how it looks like when it's extended. So you notice how the wire just kind of tucks back inside the uh, the wing, so that makes it a much cleaner, thumbs up, cleaner uh, setup. All right, so we're pretty much done with the wing section, both sides. I did the same exact thing, so now we can move on to the next part, which is building the deck plate with all of our components. Alrighty, guys. So here is the deck right now, currently. Uh, this is just a rough mock-up of what it could look like when I'm done. Uh, I may move some stuffs around. So, so far we got the AG63 from the back forward, uh, the UAT retract board, um, the Powerbox Pioneer, and the GSU. Uh, when we get up to the front, front half of the aircraft, uh, the batteries are going to be mounted inside the nose. So what I may end up doing is putting a plate over this section right here to the right side of the fuselage and put a XT60 uh, former mounted or uh, flush mounted uh, connector there and then the power leads would come out and plug into the power box Pioneer. Uh, reason being why I wanted to do that route is because the batteries will stay inside the jet and this way I can simply remove or unplug the receiver packs, charge them, and then when I'm done, plug them back in instead of trying to route the wires through or plugging it in here. Um, I'm trying to minimize the amount of wires that's gonna be out. Everything's gonna be pretty much hidden underneath the deck and trying to make this set up as clean as I can. So that is pretty much the rough layout We'll see how it turns out when I finally make my decision on how I want this, this deck to look. But for now, this is where we're at. Uh, we'll see you guys when I finally decide on how I'm going to make the uh, final layout of the deck. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Welcome back guys. So we are now finally done with the electronic setup and the programming on the transmitter on the 1.8 meter uh, BAE Hawk. So let's go ahead and take a closer look inside the, in, inside the jet and I can show you guys how the layout looks and where we are at currently in the build and I'll uh, go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the hatch, take a look at the components inside. 
So currently the receiver is not permanently mounted yet. They're still kind of, you know, not even fitted. I'm still trying to figure out best location for it. Uh, up from the nose, we've got two receiver packs, lithium ion batteries, and then we got our ECU uh, 4500 milliamp three cell lipo in there. And then somewhere uh, around this section of the nose is the uh, uh, 2S uh, lithium ion uh, battery for the retracts. So let's go ahead and power this thing on and uh, show you guys how everything looks. All right. So everything uh, powered up and uh, working correctly. Now in the uh, engine compartment, the Swin 180 is currently installed. So if you notice, if you look at the, uh, the mounts there, I did have to raise the turbine up 12 millimeters because um, uh, prior to that, when I just had it mounted right on the rails, the turbine was sitting way too low um, and the exhaust cone was almost touching the bell mount. So I needed to uh, raise the turbine to get it perfectly centered in the thrust tube. And then back here, uh, as you can see, the open compartment, the uh, fuel tank sits in here. I did remove the fuel tank just to uh, to get it pretty much cleaned out, and then I'm gonna do, redo the plumbing on the uh, the fuel tank the way I like it, and then uh, put it back in here. So with that, I got the fuel tank sitting right here on the table, uh, and this is the reason why I pulled it out. The uh, factory uh, assembly of the fuel system. Um, uses one of these uh, rubber, you know, plunger type um, fuel tank fitting that I'm not really a big fan of because uh, over time these uh, fittings tend to leak and it causes a lot of problems for you. So what I did, um, what I'm planning to end up doing is I'm going to use this uh, fuel tank fitting that uh, I got from DreamWorks RC, and it's basically you're going to take this uh, this flange here and we're going to high solid this in place. But you notice how that hole is, hole is a bit bigger than what I actually needed. So what I will do, whoop, I just dropped it, I'll, I'll pick it up later, uh, is heat this up and take this, uh, this, this, this plunge out and uh, put the new flange in there and then we're going to fit this in here and it's going to look a lot nicer and cleaner. And then for the, uh, the vent, we're just basically going to drill a hole probably in this corner right here and then high saw that in place and then that'll be it for the fuel system. So that's we are. That's where we are now, or currently at on the, uh, the build. Uh, stick around and uh, we'll finish up the uh, fuel plumbing and then get this turbine fired up in the jet and then I'll see you guys during the test phase. Hey guys, welcome back to the build of the Pilot RC 1.8 BAE Hawk. So we've been working on the factory fuel tank um, for the uh, jet. So with the uh, factory fitting, um, it had a 24 millimeter uh, diameter fitting that was originally installed. And we needed to uh, shrink that, that, that hole down to be able to use the 17 millimeter diameter uh, uh, fuel tank fitting that I got. So what I ended up doing was to remove that fitting, uh, essentially what I did was applied some heat to the uh, existing high saw. Um, method that I ended up using was I used a soldering iron and set, uh, set up the temperature to about 850 degrees and just put it right up against that aluminum flange and uh, that evenly distributed the heat so that I could pry out the, uh, the, the fitting. So once that was done, I sanded it roughly um, and laid some fiberglass sheets over it. I actually laid two layers of fiberglass over it. Uh, let it cure overnight and then this morning I went ahead and re-drilled a, um, a new hole. So this hole now is 17 millimeters wide which is perfect for the new tank fitting that we're going to use. So now it looks a lot cleaner and uh, it fits properly. So the next step now is to uh, roughly sand, uh, rough out the, uh, the inside of this flange so that the uh, high saw has more surface to uh, adhere to. And then we're just gonna go and uh, install it on the fitting and let that cure overnight so that we can finally finish the, uh, the fuel tank assembly for the Pilot RC 1.8 meter BAE Hawk. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Welcome back guys. So we are now in the final stages of the build for the 1.8 meter BAE Hawk. So what I have here is the factory fuel tank. 
So if you guys can remember during the beginning of the video and the pictures that I posted, essentially at the factory they just put two strips of Velcro under the fuel tank and then there was a wooden brace um, that goes right along the top of the fuel tank to keep it in place. Um, I just didn't feel like that was enough to secure the tank during flight and I'm worried about the fuel tank popping off um, once you start doing acrobatics with this jet and it seemed like the, the, the wood brace that went along the top of the fuel tank was just CA glued in place. I just didn't think that that was going to, to hold. So what I did was I modified the factory fuel tank and then you can see here I just added uh, wood tabs on the, the back and then also in the front and then I laid some um, fiberglass right on top of it and then used West Systems um, 105 fiberglass resin and then essentially what's going to happen is the fuel tank on the back half is going to rest on top of the turbine rail and then in the front I made um, a, a T-mount basically out of uh, plywood and then I laid some carbon fiber sheet over it on both sides with some uh, West System uh, 105 carbon um, fiberglass resin. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install this, this tank in the jet and I'll show you guys how I did the modification and how it looks like before and after from what the factory installed and the modifications that I made to the tank um, to keep this fuel tank in place during flight and I should never have to worry about it coming out and uh, you know shifting the CG and flight. So let's go ahead and put this uh, fuel tank in the jet and then we can take a look at my modification. Alright so let's go ahead and slide this fuel tank in place. I'm just going to move some of these fuel lines out of the way and the servo leads. We're going to slide this fuel tank and finalize the setup. Essentially, the tabs that I high sawed and fiberglass in place is going to slide right underneath that wood tabs that I made. And then the back is going to slide and lock in place, just so. Then, we're going to take our bolts, lean over a little bit from the camera. We're just going to drop these bolts in place. Now, there, there is a... a some T-bolts underneath the tabs that these bolts will screw into. I'm just going to hand tighten them for now. Now, reach out the front here. Let's bolt the back in place. That should lock this fuel tank in place and it shouldn't move around in flight. And I'll bring you guys a little closer uh, so you guys can see what I did to the fuel tank. All right, let me bring you guys a little closer. All right guys, so here we got the uh, fuel tank finally mounted and the fuel plumbing completed. Those are the uh, wooden tabs that I was telling you guys about that I made that is carbon fiber sheeted and it's now bolted in place. And then on the back of the tank, as it sits on the fuel tank or the uh, turbine rail, it's also bolted down. So I feel that this setup is a lot more secure and I feel a lot more confident with this than how it originally was uh, uh, designed at the factory. Uh, so I'm pretty much ready for a first turbine start so I will see you guys at the field for the first turbine start of this jet and some taxi clips.
right guys so successful on the ground checks uh, the taxi test and the brake test on the, uh, the BAE Hawk um, I definitely will need more throws on the high rates for the nose steering um, right now I have it set to 100% and as you notice with that turnaround it took almost the entire width of that runway which is about 60 feet wide so I'm gonna need to add a little bit more to the nose steering um, and then check on the suspension on the nose trot as I was taxiing it was already almost bought it was pretty much bottomed out the entire time so we might need to go into uh, look into that trot and then see what kind of springs it has we might need a little stiffer springs for the nose steering or for the nose trot because right now as it sits it's bottomed out with the trot so um, that's it for now with the uh, ground checks I'll see you guys back at the bench